was in 1997 that one of the bird watchers was fishing over here below the dam, and he thought he saw a peregrine falcon up on the railroad bridge. He came back a few days later with binoculars and discovered a pair of peregrine falcons up there, which is a very rare bird in this part of the country. And that was in 1997, and we've been here ever since then checking on the peregrine falcons about every day. Uh, last year we formed the Riverwalk Bird Club. We got about 50 members, and not only did we check the peregrine falcons, but we walked the Riverwalk and bird watch here. It's a great place. And now you've been honored uh, with your own uh, sculpture. Yes, we have, and uh, we just wonder if, if this is the only sculpture anywhere that's dedicated to bird watchers. Uh, this, this sculpture was suggested by members of the Riverwalk Bird Club, and they also raised the money to pay for it. And uh, it, it's a wonderful uh, addition to the Riverwalk, plus uh, to bird watchers everywhere. When I first came to town, why, the sculpture was this. It was a few monuments to the Civil War, and across the river there's a folk art lion that's still over there, and pretty much that was the sculpture scene. Today a friend of mine uh, told me, he said, it's getting so bad downtown and throughout the county that uh, you have to watch yourself, you're going to back up and bump into a piece of sculpture. And that's the way I like it. Someone asked me, how many of these things are you going to make, Jim? And I said, well, I'm using Rock City as my guide. How many birdhouses do you think they have? So uh, it's a concept. The idea is it's sculpture uh, in the style that I do. There are nine pieces with, with the bird watcher starting up at the uh, dam, which is zero. And they are numbered down to seven and a half. We wanted to end here at Ross's Landing. And uh, I think you'll find them interesting and entertaining. Engaged in a variety of activities, including bike riding, bird watching, walking, and setting. What does it take to become a bird watcher? <laughs> well, I don't know. I, I started when I was a kid. I had an interest in, in, in birds years ago, but uh, really, seriously, whenever you get started bird watching is when you get you a pair of binoculars and a good bird book and start identifying what you see. And uh, that's when you really get interested in bird watching is, uh, you know, if you see a bird and you say, well, that's a black bird or a green bird or a red bird, that's wrong. You need to know the name and the, and, uh, the proper name of that bird. And the best way to do it is a good pair of binoculars and a good bird book. And that, that cost about how much for both? Um, probably less than $100 for both of them. And, uh, you know, we, you can move on up to spotting scopes and stuff like that, and you can get up into, you know, it's like automobiles or anything else, you know. <laughs> they, uh, you know, a good thousand dollars will buy you one of the best spotting scopes around and uh, binoculars and everything. But the U.S. government puts out a survey every five years that says that there's more bird watchers than there are hunters and fishermen combined, and they also spend more money.